This is episode number 35. The date is the 25th of September, about 17.10 on the Saturday. Uh, this is a little bit unplanned, but I'll do my best to be lucid. I'm kind of in unknown territory here because I've done my very best to keep taking the medication, the motor power, and according to my records, I've been taking it very regularly. And I took it at 4 p.m. That was an hour ago. Um, and still no relief. In fact, I haven't had any relief from the tremor all day or all night. So it's almost as if the medicine has stopped working which is a little bit odd but maybe I need to make some adjustments to the medication that's uh, levodopa, metapa and benzirazide 100 milligrams so it's unknown territory but it's not unfamiliar territory it was kind of like this before I started on the medication so Parkinson's unchecked is Deeply uncomfortable, as this is. Continuous tremor. Uh, other symptoms, not great. Generally, sleep is disrupted. And thinking is not clear. But I do my best as I'm recording this video. Hopefully it's going to work. And let's talk about something a little bit interesting. And that is... The nature of the mind. Specifically, there is a theory or a, a book that came out about seeing if our mind state is a kind of controlled hallucination, the way the brain works. I don't mean hallucinations in the sense of something that's Negative, but it just what is. Remember the dress a few years ago. Was it blue or was it gold? So I found what I was looking for. It's an article called Our Brains Exist in a State of Controlled Hallucination by Donald Conway. This one is published in MIT Review and a number of other publications like The Insider Voice. Basically, it argues that what we see isn't what we think we see. Reality is a construct. The inner universe of subjective experience is related and can be explained in terms of biological and physical processes that develop in brains and bodies, but the experience of being you, of being me, arise from the way that the brain predicts and controls the internal state of the body it's an interesting statement. Chairs are not red. They are not ugly, old-fashioned or avant-garde. When I look at a red chair, the redness I feel depends as much on the properties of the chair as it does on the properties of my brain. It corresponds to the content of a set of perceptual predictions about the ways in which a specific type of surface reflects light. Okay, that's a little bit technical. But what it basically means is that we see things in different ways. How do we know that we see things in different ways? How do we know that the colour that we see is the same experience that another person sees when they look at the same frequency of light? Experience is entirely contextual. So the mind does what it can to take my mind off the pain or inconvenience, the difficulty, the challenge of existing in the state. I went for a walk today. I think I did seven, eight kilometers. That's good. I kept the run going and will do my best to keep the run going. Past few days I've been in and out of hospital, getting tests for this and that. Some facts. Um, in the last eight months I've lost... 13 kilograms, uh, it's 30-odd um, pounds. So 
I kind of wanted to lose the weight. So that's good. I've had a lot of disruptions to sleep as a result of the problems with the medication. I really sleep through a whole night now. And I have been trying red light therapy. I've been trying it for weeks quite consistently. Helmet and other handheld device to try to get some relief in terms of what that particular thing offers. Red light therapy hasn't yet worked for me. Maybe there's some things that need to be changed, need to be tried. The jury is still out. So I'm not going to judge at this stage one way or the other. I'm going to keep persevering and try to go for more controlled observations. So what else is happening in my life at the moment? Yeah, um, doing okay in the office. I think that's going as well as can be expected, doing my best. I think I'm producing reasonably good material, productive, occasionally struggling with apathy, like getting things done, but it seems to be mostly under control. I'm very fortunate that most of the mental aspects of Parkinson's don't really seem to apply. I am, yeah, big news, I guess, is that I am now on a surgical track to get deep brain stimulation. Some of you may have seen the small x-ray icon that appears for this particular channel. It's an x-ray of a skull with wires going down from the top. That's what happens in deep brain stimulation. A device is implanted under the chest muscles or skin, uh, which contains the battery and control. And two wires are drawn from there under the neck of the skin into the scalp and through two holes drilled in the top of the skull. Those holes are used as the reference points for a contraption, which allows the neuro surgeon to guide very carefully a pair of electrodes, much more so sophisticated than electrodes, into the living brain, whereupon the promise is that the really clever electronics can send electrical pulses that obviate the need for continued or dependence on medication when that starts to fail or when it no longer controls the condition. Now, I'm not quite there yet because I am going to be making, in consultation with an appropriate professional, changes to my medication schedule. Um, there are some things that can be done in terms of long-term release, slower release of the particular chemic chemicals that make up the leftover, uh, fast relief, which is another option and necessary for getting starting in the morning. So these are things that, of course, I will continue under medical advice. I'm continuing to do those things which make sense. And following the scientific guidance of my clinical team is number one. So anything I'm doing is not going to interfere with that. I want to be the best candidate that I can be for the surgery, which hopefully will be happening later this year. I'm engaged with the surgical team, with the clinical team, who, uh, as far as I can tell, are fantastic. They are a very experienced team. They seem, and I'm sure they do know what they're doing. So I have little to worry about in that regard. There's a very small probability that things go wrong, but frankly, I prefer that possibility to continuing like this with the constant way of living with Parkinson's, with the sleeplessness, with the motor and non-motor symptoms, which you can read about. Um, let me give a plug now to the UK Parkinson's charity, which published a fantastic YouTube video recently 
about sleep for Parkinson's, people with Parkinson's. It's a really good video. Um, it matches very closely with my own experience. So those of you who want to know what sleeplessness can be like for people with Parkinson's, check that out. I'll put a link to it somewhere if I can figure out how to do that. So what else is happening? Um, yeah, I'm trying to maintain my independence. I'm looking after myself most of the time. Um, yeah, nearly all of the time. Doing my own laundry. That takes longer than usual because it takes a while to get things done. And, yeah, keeping the place clean and tidy is a struggle, but I have help and I'm doing pretty well, I think, in that regard. Uh, there's always things that can be improved, but uh, I'm definitely working towards improvement. There are the usual ups and downs that occur. Um, I have made a promise to myself to try to do more in terms of these videos. There's been a bit of a gap since the last video um, in terms of when that was, um, which, hmm, let's have a look, maybe I can tell. Yeah, so it's now Saturday the 25th of September. The last video was published on the 25th of August, about a month ago. So it's been a while. Thanks for waiting around. What really got my interest, though, was this piece that our brains exist in a state of controlled hallucinations. We're building models of the world to explain and predict how we live, what we see, what we think, what we feel. It all comes back to the brain and the brain that shapes the experience. In other words, the problems of consciousness. And this is called the, the easy problem by some philosophers. Very interesting area. Artificial intelligence, the nature of the mind, the structure of how the brain actually works. We're only scratching the surface, or in my case, digging deep into the middle um, to try to control the Parkinson's, which is something I'm actually looking forward to. I feel positive about that. I think it's going to be an improvement in my quality of life. And I will certainly do my best to report my condition, both before the surgery and after. Now, it's a long process. It's not in and out on the same day. It's not like uh, pulling a tooth or doing what other surgical procedures do. This one is a very complex neurosurgical procedure that requires care, planning, consideration, an experienced team, and a lot of follow-up because after they've implanted the two wires inside the skull and after the healing of that is done, then begins the process of programming the system, of making sure that it can actually do what is expected of it to quieten, to quieten the functions of the over-disturbed neurons which characterize this particular movement disorder and therefore reduce dependency on the medications. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished. Yeah, a bit of Shakespeare there. So what is next? Well, for me, I'm going to continue to research and learn more that I can about the nature of the brain, the nature of what it is to live in a kind of continuous state of controlled hallucination that we call our consensus reality. I'm going to learn by trying to observe myself. I have a, as I've somewhat times joked, I have a test lab with a clinical trial occurring and the member of that clinical trial is myself. So I'm trying to uh, 
uh, approach things in a scientific way and hopefully others may benefit from my mistakes. I hope I'm not making too many, but certainly I'm making a few. And yeah, that's where the story will pause for now. I'll come up with a new episode maybe in the next days, maybe in the next weeks, but it will be soon. And of course, long term after the surgery, I will do my best to start again continuing with this series to explain what is it like to have a couple of electrodes wired into your brain and connected to a controller. Is it true that there's a turbo button that can make you think faster? <laughs> no, that's one of my little jokes. But it is true that it will be life transforming. I think I want to express my gratitude to living in the UK, where I can benefit from the expertise of the NHS. That is indeed a noble institution, and I fully support the work of all of the people in that institution because they've certainly helped me and continue to help me in obtaining the best quality of life that I can. That's all to report at this stage. Thank you for your attention. Like and click. No, click and subscribe. No, like and subscribe. Got there eventually. Subscribe and like if you like this type of content. If you want to watch more, then feel free to tune in. Same time, same channel next time. Thank you. Peace.